everyone. Uh, this is Pam and Linda with Your Nurse Advocate Consulting. And for our live tonight, we wanted to touch base a little bit on September is also Alzheimer's Awareness Month. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, a nurse advocate can, can help with families that are struggling with Alzheimer's, talk a little bit about Alzheimer's itself, and also talk a little bit about all the resources that we have on our patient advocate match with people that could help with um, uh, managing patients that, that have Alzheimer's. So first, just wanted to say that Alzheimer's is, it's tough. I mean, it's a very, very difficult disease. Um, it affects, it's a, it's a form of dementia. Um, it is a form of dementia that unfortunately there is no cure for and, and Alzheimer's is fatal. So uh, sometimes you may have dementia and you may have that for many, 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 many years, but Alzheimer's will continually continue to cause the symptoms to worsen until you're not able to speak or walk or feed yourself. So it's it's a very, very tough disease. Linda, is there anything you want to say about Alzheimer's itself? Yeah, Alzheimer's can either progress very slowly and people can stay in certain phases of Alzheimer's based on medication management once they're diagnosed. So they can be have mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease for a period of time, or they could also just progress through these symptoms very, very quickly. So depending on the age, the comorbidities that you have, whether you get early diagnosis and early medication management will determine the prognosis and the time frame that Alzheimer's will um, progress through your lifespan. You know, we've, Lynn and I have both um, cared for clients in, in different stages of Alzheimer's. And, you know, what, a, what one of the things that a nurse advocate can do is lots, really lots of things. We can come alongside you with the family. Now, uh, one of our clients we had, they had a, a very behavioral uh, form of Alzheimer's. They would ingest cleaning materials, soaps. Uh, they would try to get out of the house. We helped them get locks for the windows and locks, you know, on the insides of the door, uh, you know, how to lock up. We got locks on the cabinets and we removed a lot of things. So we can help educate the families on how to keep the, the patient safe at, at home as long as possible. Uh, we can work on oftentimes, you know, it's it's involved with bringing in private caregivers or using an agency. Us as a nurse advocate, we can come alongside you, help you with the interviewing process, help you choose an agency that is the best fit for you, as well as a caregiver. Linda, is there anything you want to say about some of the things we can do as an advocate that can help the families? Yeah, the we can do several things. Basically, what we initially start to do is meet you where you are. What we try to do is seek to understand what your, where your loved one or where you are in the disease process, what has been done up to this point. So we try to gain some information and knowledge so that we understand what, what is happening to your loved one and what you have done up to that point. After that, we, we do a complete assessment to make sure that we have what we need to be able to help make good recommendations to help you make informed decisions. We also connect with your physicians and we connect with your providers, your gerontologist, your neurologist, anyone that you're working with. We do medication reconciliation to make sure that the medications that you're on, on top of maybe the Alzheimer's medications aren't causing actually more distress so we walk through a lot of those things with you, and then we help you, we help you understand where your loved one is or where you are in the disease process and help give you the resources that you need to help you from that point and then help you move futuristically as the disease progresses. Whether that be that we connect you with the Alzheimer's support system or whether there's support groups within your area that you can work with to help provide support that you need, especially for the primary caregiver. It's really important to make sure that that primary caregiver uh, doesn't burn out and 
has the resources and the support that they need through this journey, just as it's important for the patient who is experiencing Alzheimer's to maintain safe and to have a good quality of life for as long as possible. One of the, one of the hardest things that we see with families and where us as advocates and, and our resources can also help you with is a lot of people don't know how to communicate with someone with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. It can be very frustrating because they don't remember what they said or they, they, they talk about things that really didn't occur. And sometimes you try and correct them and they get angry and they get upset. And what you have to understand is their reality or what they're sharing, that is real to them. Just as Linda and I are talking to you to, here tonight, if someone were to tell me, oh, you're not on a Zoom tonight, you know, talking about Alzheimer's with Linda, I'd tell them that they were crazy, you know, and, but yet, you know, that's how they, that's how they, they, they appear and that's how they process things is what they're seeing and saying to you, they truly believe and it is very real for them. A lot of patients with Alzheimer's, they're, they're very paranoid. They're very suspicious of people. Uh, this, this poor client we had, her poor husband didn't know what to do, how to act, because one minute she recognized and remembered him as her husband and was very affectionate, would put her arms around him, would give him a kiss on the cheek. And 30 minutes later, she'd look at him, you know, with daggers in his eyes and she'd tell us, you better keep an eye on that man because he's, 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 he's a tricky one. He's going to, you know, hurt you. He's, he's trying to kill me. Please protect me. And she'd truly be scared. And it's very, very real. So if you keep trying to contradict them and try and tell them that they're really not seeing or hearing or experiencing what they see they are, they're, they're only going to get very suspicious and angry with you. So we can provide a lot of resources that can help you um, also learn how to communicate. And, you know, if you get a chance and want to go to our website, it's just yournurseadvocateconsulting.com and go to the blog. Uh, we did uh, a couple of months ago, we actually did a blog post on how to communicate with someone with Alzheimer's or dementia. So there'll be a lot of tips there, there as well. Um, Linda? Yeah, in regards to communication, a lot of times uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease are clients that we've had they have problems with communicating themselves in regards to their nonverbal. They don't actually speak, but they're still walking around and they're still um, acting as if they are cognizant of what's going on around them, but they're nonverbal. So it's also important to pick up on the behavioral cues that the individual is showing to you in regards to whether they're hungry or whether they're tired. And a lot of times it's really difficult to assume where, where they're at and what their needs are. So a lot of times it's more of watching the behavior and understanding the behavior and being around them consistently to know that when they're sitting down at on the couch, they want the TV turned on, even though they can't tell you or they don't remember how to use a remote. But when they do that, they want the TV on. So it's just a matter of, of understanding those cues and being able to communicate in the way they understand. As the disease progresses, that becomes more difficult. So you're also, other things will also become more difficult such as caring for them with their activities of daily living and bathing and dressing and, and preparing meals. So getting a caregiver in place to help provide you with some respite is also going to be important. And we can help you with that interviewing process and what to look for in regards to a caregiver for whatever or how many hours that you're looking for on a day or a weekly basis to help provide some of that support to you so that you can be uh, the primary caregiver without having a level of burnout and frustration always feeling that you have to be there 24 hours a day, which as the disease progresses is usually what is required to keep them safe at home. You know, um, when looking at you know a caregiver, whether it's a private caregiver or an agency, we can't stress to you enough how important it is, is that you make sure that whoever bring into your home is experienced with dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's mm -hmm. because they, it can become a very volatile situation if they're not familiar with that disease and how to communicate with someone with that disease. 
And I've seen it get, you know, quite ugly at times with people that were not familiar mm -hmm. with how to care for someone with Alzheimer's. So that's really, really important. You know, it, it might not be the right time, you know, to have someone from church come in and spend, you know, a couple of hours with someone while you run errands, you know, if they have some advancing Alzheimer's and are very suspicious, that could could end in, in, a, in a not so good situation. And um, mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be good for, for your, 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 say your church family member or your loved one. Um, mm -hmm. Linda? Yeah, it's, you know, the, this disease is a, a horrendous, horrible disease and its progression is in some ways um, standard. And then in other ways, it's very volatile. It's very dynamically changing. So you have to be aware and attuned to that individual's needs and behaviors and where they are in their reality. Because at that moment in time, that is their reality. So being aware of some historical things and being aware of where they were is really important. But as they progress through this disease, they become less functional, which means they do a lot less walking. They are not able to dress themselves. They're not able to toilet themselves. They're not able to feed themselves. So an advocate, a nurse advocate such as Pam and myself can help you through that journey to help you know when it's time for placing them outside the home if there's no alternative to help keep them at home safely with assistance at home. We can help the, with the interviewing process there, help you understand what you need to be looking for when it comes to placement of your loved one in a community where they can be safe. So these are some of the components that we can help you with because this is a very truly devastating disease and it, it burns out even the best caregivers very, very quickly because of the needs of these individuals and the, the rationale for them to need to be safe all the time and their sense of reality always in suspicion or being questioned. So having that ability to work with you, and it's a privilege and it's an honor for Pam and I to, to be able to do this so that we, we want you to know that we will walk this journey with you and help provide you with the resources you need to, to be successful and to, to feel that you're providing the best care for your loved one. And you know, another thing that we can help you too is, is Alzheimer's, Lewy body's dementia. There's a couple of forms of dementia that actually will qualify you at, at a particular time to be eligible for hospice benefits. And uh, Linda, Linda and I can, can help uh, walk you through that and know when the time is right. Linda, off the top of your head, do you want to share just some of the criteria for uh, for a hospice for someone with Alzheimer's dementia? They actually have to be, um, a lot of times they, people assume as soon as they start, they have the diagnosis, they can come on into hospice. There is a scale of a criteria that hospice has to meet eligibility criteria for a patient with dementia. First, they have to actually have a diagnosis of dementia. They have to be towards the end stages of dementia, which means they shouldn't be functionally able to walk anymore. They should be more wheelchair bound. They should have limited to minimal trunk control, which means they can't sit up straight anymore. They're unable to really verbalize. They ha may have what we call word salad, which means the verbalizations that they have are non, um, they're not understandable. They're what we would call nonsensical in a, in a way that they can't verbalize that much anymore. They're unable to feed themselves and they sleep a lot more than when they were before, when they were ambulatory. So that's the criteria we'll use along with weight loss and along with um, the types of medications and any other comorbidities that they may have. But specifically for Alzheimer's, they, they really cannot be like what we call walking and talking and feeding themselves and being able to dress themselves. Those things, those abilities have to be pretty much non-existent. You know, one of the other things that we can do as advocates is, is, as we talked earlier, is identify resources. And Linda and I have a patient advocate match, which is a resource directory for healthcare professionals. And we have many resources in our directory of people that can help. We have Carla Wilson with music therapy. A lot of people don't realize 
with Alzheimer's patients. You can take a nonverbal Alzheimer's patient that you just can't, can't seem to reach and you have a music therapist come in and Carla's great because she does this virtually, you know, over Zoom and she gets to know the, the person, you know, what era are they from? What was their favorite music? And she just, and she plays the music and she's actually a, a certified music therapist. And just these Alzheimer's patients can just come alive. I mean, they may not have spoken in, in, in weeks and, and they'll maybe will sing a hymn or they will smile or their, their eyes will get brighter. And so it's really a great uh, resource in working with Alzheimer's patients. We also have an, an Alzheimer's um, and dementia expert who actually works and trains families how to care for people with dementia. She also trains uh, facilities, whether it's assisted livings or nursing homes or uh, you know group homes. She can come in and train the staff on how to work with that as well as, as working with families. We have just, we have physical therapists. We have um, so many resources that are available that could help, you know, help you manage, um, you know, your loved one with Alzheimer's. So encourage you, you know, to go to patientadvocatematch.com and just look at, at the resources we have and see if something uh, that, that might be there that can help you. Linda, is there anything that you'd like to say in, in wrapping up? Yeah, in regards to music therapy, I've actually um, seen a, a video and actually have seen the empowerment that music can provide to Alzheimer's patients. Um, the study involved a nonverbal Alzheimer's patient who really was non-responsive to a lot of the things when people would come in and talk with them and work with them. But they put a set of earphones on her head and they found that she was a very religious woman in her past and was part of the choir at her church. So they put the earphones on and they played her her favorite hymn. And this non-verbal individual started singing and tapping her hand on the chair to the beat of the hymn and singing as best as she could and mouthing the hymn words. But her face lit up. It was so amazing to see a face that was blank and very stoic all of a sudden just light up because of the music that meant so much to her that was ingrained in the primitive part of her brain that was part of her being that she responded so well to. And I can't stress to you enough how these resources can help you and help you in just the very simplest of ways, provide such a good outlook and equality for that patient with Alzheimer's. And this is just, we're gonna be coming back, you know, live every Wednesday, you know, please, you know, I'm gonna check the comments, we're on Zoom. So we're in a different platform, so I, I can't see the comments live tonight, but please feel free to put the comments in. If you have questions, we certainly, whether it's about Alzheimer's or when Lynn and I come back on Wednesday evenings, if you have a topic that we'd like to discuss or a question or a, a health challenge or a challenge with maybe an aging parent, you know, please reach out and, and ask the question and, and give us a comment and we'll be sure to uh, address them for you. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, Linda, anything else you want to add? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Well, then we'll make it short and sweet, and we will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye bye.